motto of these two days is about bridges because we are a bridge builder and you will see how this metaphor fits nicely into our work in these two days. We would like to be able to deliver a whole fintech scene to you guys that they will work on our technology stack to get access to um, uh, these banking infrastructures you have in place and to get access to money. But for you, this means you can inherit or make benefits of tremendous ideas of fintechs that stand alone are not successful, but together with you as an additional capability to your banking model, you can really survive and be a huge benefit for both. Bam, 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 three times through the wall. When Gutenberg invented the printing press, 93% of people could not read. And if you could read, you couldn't buy a book because there were no bookstores. Can only a superhero break through that wall, that brick wall? The answer is yes. <laughs> if you're a regular guy, you can't do it. It's a brick wall. <laughs> you can't bring, break through it. Well, it's completely hard, you know, but also no. You need to super, but not necessarily in everything, because you can find power in a team. So the technology is there, but the more technology we see, the more rare and valuable humans become, and the more you have to go up the pyramid. So the trick of, di of disruption is remove the physical. Remove the physical thing, and what's left is your mission and what's gone might just be extra weight. So this digital and personnel, I think that's gonna be a key concept going forward. And, and it really requests to better understand what it really means related to future usage of communication channels. So it, it has to be simple. It needs to simplify the customer's life. It should, be, it should be a personalized experience, not experience for everybody. It should, be, it, it should give clients a voice and probably it should be exclusive and should have access anytime, everywhere. Uh, one, one thing um, Francisco was mentioning also, that if you're not a superstar, if you're not Superman, you bring a super team with you and then you're safe. And that's what I did. So Avalog for sure is the right product. One third of you already uh, were choosing this product. So thank you very much for this. And the, the rest, I think we will convince today. You've been asking for it. New experience, new design. That's why we are here. Well, I want to state the obvious, you know, all the best products in the world, the best experiences, the best things in the world Believe me, they don't come from nothing instantly. They come from people spending thousands of hours thinking about it, talking about it, iterating, developing, working very hard to make the best products in the world. Nothing good comes easy. We're just going to share, I think, what we have done so far, uh, and especially with uh, the Avalok Front platform. Uh, what is our roadmap, the, the background, and I also share, I think, the, the setup of the, the project that we've been running for six months. Other trends will follow the examples of Amazon or iTunes and offer investment advice based on behaviour and peer group decisions. Uh, in Australia, a superannuation guarantee scheme which started in 1992 means that 9.25% of our salaries uh, have to be contributed to our retirement savings. So wealth needed to be where the bank was, not as a separate offer, but tightly integrated. So it was an early decision that wherever the bank was, we would be. If they were in the branches, we would be in the branches. If they were online, we would be online. If they were on mobile, we would be on mobile. Because only then can we deliver end-to-end -end needs to our customers in terms of all of their financial needs. Is that all of these innovations have to be developed, maintained, um, managed, and also funded somehow. And the way that firms are doing that from, from the research that we've carried out is through making savings and efficiencies elsewhere. Innovation is built on changing the way that things are done. And as Shakespeare had it, nothing can come from nothing. So I think that's the overarching message we sent from that. 
Now, what have banks told us? Where do they stand with regard to this framework? They are really not very far at the moment. Except for organizational efficiency, where banks feel they have achieved quite something over the last years, and to a lesser extent on process excellence, all other levers were rated very limited or limited in terms of their implementation. Basically, going through all your processes, channels, products, countries, markets, relationship managers and, and clients, understanding their profit contribution to your company on the consideration of the cost of capital. The overwhelming, overwhelming number one point, I think every CXO said, is resistance to change and culture within the bank. I think costs can be managed, we see that on a regular basis, with phased implementations, rigorously executing on quick wins to fund longer term initiatives. But on some of them, of course, management need to take also a bit the long term view, as on the long run they will definitely pay off. But we also need to make sure that BPO is not the business disabler, but is a business enabler. The back office portal were basically created out of the industrialization program because we had the need that we had different instances to manage, uh, different instances on the Avalok Sourcing Master and we needed to have one window for our back office employees to all the different systems in order they are able to see all the order books and they can do once and deploy many times. Let me say as well something, just imagine if you have if you're part of a client community with 25, 30 or 50 banks worldwide and you're getting a corporate action, you're getting the best of breed of that corporate action from all custodians, from all of the clients. So imagine you're a small bank, you're not directly in the market, you may be over some custodians, but you're directly profiting of another client who is directly invested in the local market. So you're getting much more information, much more complete. Now, does, how does industrialization, I mean, we heard about standardization, we heard about automation, how does this go along with digital banking? Because what is important in digital banking? It is about customer or client experience, it's about differentiating, and it's about, it's about time to market. You know, one year ago, uh, I think it, Thomas Beck was it on stage and announced that we are going to work on this, on this, on this digital banking as a service one year ago. Now it's one year later and we have really achieved a lot. We are opening for trial accounts in July. So you will be able to find this, uh, get a trial account on our page in, uh, after July. And basically we can uh, start uh, giving you those uh, uh, AFP boxes also for developers uh, after August. We are focusing a lot, not only on building up the BPO Center, but also leveraging the network and step by step getting in a more global operating model. It's an economy of scale business. We need to grow. The market potential is immense and we want to double our business in each of the BPO centers in the years to come. How we are aiming to achieve operational excellence, the current status of our initiative, and our way to successful transformation. Banks need to be flexible to be able to react to quickly changing market demand and regulations. Therefore, they need to fundamentally change their proposition and reduce their product shelf complexity. I wanted to also give you some insights in why um, the um, two parties, Avalok and Raiffeisen, decided to team up and to go for those ambitious goals. We have been printing money with the money printed. We have been bailing out the government, bailing out some of the banks. And what happened? The money went backward. It didn't go at the end of the cycle into the shop, into the real economy. So on the top of low price, you get low currencies. And this is going to complicate the situation because also a lot of companies have now debt in dollars. We started being a world of a first buy economy. I need it, take a phone, I need it. Then we moved in an economy of I want it, a replacement economy. Your next cellular phone, you do not need it, but you may want it. The client's end goal is to, to realize cost efficiencies by 
executing core functions by third parties without degrading competitive positions. So now I was successfully identified and the identification has completed and um, everything goes well and we're actually all set up. We can now go to the next step. And the next step in the process now is to show the confirmation page. So here you can exactly see the integration of the documents that were um, created. So on one side, on the left side, you see the whole formula with all the client my data, and uh, that's all personal. Please don't look too long. Away. And then on the right side, you see actually snapshots of all the ID cards, the identification uh, mechanisms. What we need to do is we have to change from a bank-centric, product and service-centric model to a customer-centric, life-centric model. My vision is that we together can create a financial ecosystem. And why do I think that we can succeed? Because it won't stop in front of the financial service industry. Uh, we can build that network and that ecosystem together with you.